Okay, so today we're going to be looking at this uh, MF2750. See if I can rotate it. So this is from 2007, and I'm not exactly sure. They, they put these in quite a range of cars, and there's slight variants of the exact same radio. So this particular one is uh, with a green display, greenish, yellowish. Yellow, I think it is. Right, so it's this kind of... Uh, orangey whatever it is but a bit more warm of a color and this one actually right supports uh, aux in so you press CDC for longer and you have an aux right so for this one you can actually buy for as low as I think 17 bucks you can buy a little box that plugs into this upper uh, depending on where you look at it on this section of this port and that's where the the aux input is. So this is actually a little pinout. Uh, right. So these uh, three ones are are the aux. Um, now I did have some. I actually got this for as as exchange for another job. So uh, as part of the payment for another job. And um, yeah. So. This hasn't been too tricky, and again, right, you could definitely buy the 20 buck one, just plug it in. Also needs power, and it's a bit less elegant because I really don't know how. Although, mm, there's some aux enable or detect or mute or some shit lines, but I'm very worried about the $20 units that they'll always be powered on. Right, and that's fine the first time you plug them in, then you connect your phone to it. Although they might just be always discoverable, right? Because mm, so these default, these modules by default are only discoverable at power up, but you can't actually make them always discoverable. So I think that's what they're doing there. So yeah, I guess it's fine. Anyway, I do have these modules, so man, went this route. So I basically glued one in with the sanitary silicone, which I really am hoping will not become conductive in there pretty tight though for the time being so that's fine and um, basically you need to take out this board let me just zoom out a little bit so you take out this board you can probably see that the shield is on a bit crooked you take it out you take the the shield off I mean this isn't really a shield this is more of a structural support thing um, basically heat it super hardcore with the iron pull it up a bit, then go to the other one, pull it up a bit, and so on and so forth. And then once you do open it, I think this is made by Alpine, or is it? Uh, it doesn't really say, huh? But anyway, it does seem like the old Alpine ones, in that it does have actual pinouts labeled, actual labels on the, on the PCB. So you just pull this out, and then you'll see on this board, this input board, you will see that there's aux in, uh, aux G, aux R, and aux uh, L. So it's you just simply connect to those. What is relatively useful uh, and pretty, yeah, not too bad, is on the left side. So the aux there's a there's a bigger connector here and there's a smaller connector here. I already screwed it back in, so and it's really not that interesting. So there's a bigger connector here. This one has uh, the aux connections, and there's a smaller one here that has the speaker output connections and also it has a power to the antenna so it says p dot ant or p underscore ant or, or some crap the good thing is is that that one gets 12 volts only or the supply voltage whatever it is only when the radio is on right so you take that feed it into a linear regulator as you probably noticed over here and then to the uh, 5 volt uh, Morton Sun DC DC converter, which is the one I recommend, and um, that way, right at every power up, your Bluetooth module will power up, will try to connect to the last phone, right? Because even if you even if you right, the problem with having it always connect, I'm not advertising for the like my mod as opposed to the twenty one. I mean, the twenty dollar one is definitely way cooler and easier and shit. But the one advantage this has is at power up, these modules will try to connect to their last paired device or their last paired eight devices in the case of the 
CSRA 64215. And um, that is pretty cool, right? So you get in the car, turn it on, and automatically your phone is already connected to it. You don't have to always go, and especially on iPhones, it's super retarded. You can go into settings with force touch, it's a bit better, but go into settings, scroll down, find it, click it. I don't know, dude, it's just, ah. Uh, this one, you get in the car, hit play, that's all, you're done, you're already connected, you're playing. You're, this one remembers if it's on aux, so it's, I don't know, if you, you have the skills and you have the time, the module is like 12 bucks, I'll leave it in the description. And uh, Bluetooth 4.2, insanely quick. And I would kind of recommend it. Um, that's pretty much all. Not much else to say. And the test, I'll just skip you. You guys are going to have to trust me. It does work. And uh, others that do not have the aux in, I do not know how to enable it. And uh, what people have done in that case is uh, tap into... You could definitely search online and you'll find the pictures. If not, then do hit me down in the comments. But I think that should be fine. There's some caps here that apparently feed from the uh, CD drive. And you can use my old method of just playing a blank CD and... Uh, Get that going. Alright. Have a good one, guys.